you're going to hear about my party. They're going to be shutting them down. They're going to probably be arresting me, doing all types of crazy things just because we want to have a good time. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the times that interviews ominously predicted the imprisonment of celebrities. How so, do you survive that? Because I'm, cause I'm me. Because I'm me, I'm different. Number 10, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. When your public enemy number one, speaking to the press, is rarely a smart move. But this notorious criminal seemed to think the opportunity to boast was worth the risk. Sean Penn met the fugitive El Chapo for an interview that he hoped would reopen a dialogue about drugs in America. He came away with something very different. After his 2015 prison escape, El Chapo secretly met with Oscar-winning actor Sean Penn, who was writing a piece for Rolling Stone. Sean Penn had no idea what he was walking into. There was no way he could know what kind of temperament El Chapo could have. El Chapo did not hold back, proudly proclaiming his status as the world's biggest drug trafficker. His bold confession, his desire to control his public image, and his plans to make a film about himself ultimately helped authorities track him down and re-arrest him. Sometimes it pays to be modest. We had a contact upon which we were able to facilitate an invitation. Number nine, Sergei Polonsky. A 2011 showdown between Russian oligarchs led to major legal trouble, particularly for this real estate mogul. During a televised economic debate, Polonsky angered former KGB spy Alexander Lebedev. I didn't know who the guy was. I was listening for 90 minutes, which I don't think was depicted by Sky, uh, of, of aggression and insults, which actually ended with uh, direct aggression against me, with actually a threatening move, and uh, I don't think I had any, any big chance. The situation escalated quickly when Lebedev punched Polonsky so hard he fell from his chair. When Lebedev received community service for the attack, it was Polonsky who eventually served time. Polonsky left Russia in 2012 to live on his private island in Cambodia. He had already been detained in Cambodia in November 2013. Just a year after their altercation, Polonsky landed in a Cambodian jail for allegedly assaulting sailing crew members. Later, he faced embezzlement charges and was placed on Interpol's most wanted list, solidifying his fall from grace. The billionaire was charged in absentia as part of a criminal case involving the embezzlement of over 175 million U.S. dollars in a residential construction project in central Moscow. Number 8. Mike Tyson Despite being considered one of the world's best boxers, Mike Tyson is no stranger to legal trouble. The satellite trucks beamed the news. Ticket scalpers were very much in evidence and Don King was there for Mike Tyson's most important fight. Not in the ring, but in Judge Patricia Gifford's courtroom. By 1999, he had already served three years for sexual assault, in addition to his history of juvenile delinquency. Just before his fight with Francois Botta, Tyson had a conversation with sports anchor Russ Salzberg that was so profane and hostile, Salzberg had to cut it short. Mike, why do you have to talk like that? Well, I'm talking to you the way I want to talk to you. Do you have a problem? Turn off your station. You know what? I think we'll end the discussion right now. Unsurprisingly, Tyson's legal issues didn't end with that friendly chat. Just a month later, he was sentenced to 12 months in jail for a prior road rage incident, and he'd face a plethora of additional charges in years to come. I, I feel that 100%, but um, I don't hold that to no bitterness. That's just something, that's just, it occurred, it happened. A moment in time, it's a wrap, it's over. I'm doing this stuff now, I can't get that time back. This is what I'm doing now. Number seven, Danny Masterson. Masterson is best known for two things, his sitcom roles and his alarming record of sexual misdeeds. Years before the truth about his actions came to light, Masterson appeared on Late Night with Conan O'Brien to promote that 70s show. Hey, you, you're all... Hello, sir. You clean up real nice. You look great. Thanks. My yeah. mom picked it out for me. That's very nice. During the segment, he made a sexual joke during an anecdote to which Conan quipped that he had heard about him and suspected he'd be caught soon. So why are you asking people to do that? That's the more important question. I mean, you got him. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Accent aside. Everybody should grab. That's the more important thing. Exactly. Um, I've heard about you. Uh, <laughs> and you'll be caught soon. I know you will. I will. While it's unclear exactly what Conan had heard, his remark proved frighteningly accurate. Almost two decades later, Masterson was not only caught, but convicted. This moment serves as a stark reminder that sometimes jokes hit closer to reality than we realize. 
the former actor and now convicted felon brought to justice. Masterson's two victims, who have not been publicly identified, termed Jane Doe 1 and 2, saw their attacker in court sentenced to 30 years to life. Number 6. Harvey Weinstein this ex-film producer's misconduct was so extensive that it inspired the term the Weinstein effect, which helped ignite the Me Too movement in October 2017. Prosecutors say they want to file a motion to consolidate the new indictment with the retrial. So it's hard to believe that just months earlier, Weinstein was at the top of Hollywood's hierarchy, as seen in this interview with CNN. To me, I'm still the underdog. I felt that way when I was young, and sometimes I still feel that way. Speaking with an air of false humility, he referred to himself as a, quote, underdog who was, quote, working his dream. Watching it after Weinstein's downfall and knowing what was going on behind the scenes, the video feels steeped in arrogance and hypocrisy. His disingenuousness creates a creepy undertone that's hard to miss. It takes its toll on you, the work, the work and you wish you could be, you know, me in particular, love to be less temperamental. I, I, each year I get less and less, but I started so high you remember the chipping away at that mountain. Number 5. Jesse Smollett Once beloved for his role as Jamal on Empire, Smollett came under fire in 2019 after claiming to be the victim of a hate crime, only for it to be revealed that he had fabricated and staged the entire thing. What is it that has you so angry? Is it the, the attackers? It's the is attackers, it... but it's also the attacks. It's like, you know, at first it was a thing of like, Listen, if I tell the truth, then that's it, because it's the truth. Just weeks after the supposed attack, Smollett sat down with ABC's Robin Roberts to recount the details, claiming he was jumped by two men and bombarded with racist and homophobic slurs. Then I look down and I see that there's a rope around my neck, which I hadn't You hadn't noticed that, it before? No, you didn't because see? it was so fast. You know what I'm saying? It was so fast. How long did this all It felt take like minutes, but it probably was like 30 seconds. Throughout the conversation, he appeared emotional and resolute, standing by his story while criticizing those who doubted him. However, his detractors were proven right, and Smollett was soon convicted of felony disorderly conduct for making false police reports. A defiant Smollett shouting as he was let out of the courtroom after being sentenced to 30 months probation with the first 150 days to be served at Chicago's notorious Cook County Jail. Number 4. R. Kelly it wasn't until 2021 that R. Kelly, the R&B singer with a notorious history of sexually abusing minors, was finally brought to justice. He got 20 years in prison today. He will serve all but one of those years simultaneously. However, many years earlier in 2008, Kelly showed a talent for dodging tough questions when he was asked about his troubling behavior. During a BET interview with journalist Ture, he was asked whether he liked teenage girls. When you say teenage, how are we talking? Girls who are teenagers. 19? 19 and younger. While the question was straightforward, Kelly's evasive response raised serious concerns. His reluctance to give a clear answer hinted at the dark reality that would later surface. In hindsight, this exchange feels like an ominous warning of the long overdue legal reckoning that awaited the singer. They've said that they're concerned that you like underage girls. Let me put it to you this way, man. You know, unfortunately, the people that don't work for me says that. The people that do work for me don't say that. Number three, Charlie Sheen. After personal issues led to his dismissal from Two and a Half Men, this disgraced actor spoke to several media outlets. The choices I was making um, were not leading to the results that I wanted. So I woke up and said, dude, you're 45 with five kids. Let's Let's do something different because this thing is boring. But far from clearing his name, Sheen's attempts to explain himself only left the public more confused, not to mention a little alarmed. Eh, they don't know me. They, and, and the same people talking about those incidents weren't there. So how much can they really discuss a situation they were not involved with? You know, at that point, it's all just judgment and opinion and just the, the gibberish of fools. In appearances on ABC, NBC, TMZ and more, Sheen hinted at his chaotic lifestyle and used bizarre phrases like tiger blood and Adonis DNA, whatever that means, 
Sheen's cavalier attitude made it clear that his tumultuous life was on a collision course with the law. You can't process me with a normal brain. No lies detected. The LAPD descended on Charlie Sheen's home. They were searching for guns, which would be a violation of his restraining order. Number two, Bill Cosby. For much of the late 20th century, Cosby was celebrated as America's dad, entertaining viewers of all ages on stage and screen. Now, we've gone around here about 800 times. Don't you think it's time for you to ride this without my hand on the back of the seat? I might fall. You're not going to fall. I will catch you. No, you won't. This made it all the more devastating for his fans and supporters when, in 2014, it was revealed that he had spent pretty much his entire career committing horrific sexual assaults. After the world learned of his crimes, a comment he made to Larry King in 1991 took on an especially chilling tone. Spanish fly was the thing that all boys uh, at, from age 11 on up to death, <laughs> we will still be searching for Spanish fly. Cosby's offhand joke about Spanish fly, a substance he claimed would make women more compliant, was initially dismissed as a humorous anecdote. However, in hindsight, it reveals a troubling reference to the heinous accusations that would ultimately lead to Cosby's conviction. Bill Cosby found guilty, the actor and comedian once known as America's dad, found guilty on all charges today, his head down taking deep breaths after the verdict. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Sean Diddy Combs Unless you live under a rock, inside a cave, on a faraway planet, you're likely aware that this popular rapper has been the subject of major controversy. Not just once, but over and over again. This morning, watch how federal agents took Sean Diddy Combs into custody. He's seen in this video entering the Park Hyatt Hotel in Midtown Manhattan with others when agents from Homeland Security Investigations approach and separate him. They place Combs under arrest and lead him out the front door in handcuffs. Among the worst of Combs' alleged offenses occurred at what he called his parties, events which may have included significant unsavory acts. Disturbingly, a comment Combs made in 1999 suggests he realized his actions were reprehensible even then. Your parties are the hottest ticket around. They won't even give me a permit for the parties, man. They don't want me to throw the parties no more. Speaking to Entertainment Tonight, Combs, known back then as Puff Daddy, mentioned that his parties were becoming legendary and surmised they'd eventually land him in jail. Though the comment came across as a joke, if not a twisted flex, it now seems quite prophetic in light of Combs' later legal troubles. A lot of people out there that feel intimidated by it, it ain't nothing but, but, but break it down racial barriers, break it down generation barriers. Which of these celebrity arrests could you see coming a mile away? Let us know in the comments. I got in a lot of trouble, of course, you know, because I was violent when I came out. And I think I was real bitter when I came out. That's the reason I was that way. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.